Under Armour's founder, Kevin Plank, is returning as CEO. He's going to replace Stephanie Lenartz, effective April 1st. Mohamed El Arian has been named non-executive chair. Our Sarah Eisen's on the phone with more on these changes and maybe, Sarah, some reflections on the stock action pre-market today. Yeah, good morning, Carl and, and David and Mike. So it's not that surprising if you followed Under Armour carefully over the last few years, as I have, a lot of investors have, that Kevin Plank is back as CEO. He's been very involved, even as he stepped out of the CEO role about four years ago when Patrick Frisk came over. He was the non-executive chairman then. What is surprising about this announcement is that it's abrupt and the timing Stephanie Lenartz was just put in place as CEO about a year ago, February 2023. She's barely into what she laid out in her three-year plan. So that raises questions about why now. Company isn't saying, don't have answers as to exactly what happened here, just that it was a board decision. But you can imagine investors are asking, why wasn't she given the time to implement her changes? Did she clash with Kevin Plank, both in personality or in terms of the strategy on the growth plan? We know that Plank is aggressive. He's hungry. He's, he's, been, he's, he's potentially impatient about the growth story. And that really gets to the problem at Under Armour right now. It's been this turnaround story. And the previous two CEOs have been really working on writing the ship, both in profitability and in inventory levels. But it has not seen growth. And that is the problem. The brand, the growth profile, it's a fraction of what it was. Back in the heyday, this stock peaked around 2015. Kevin Plank presided over a tremendous growth period for Under Armour. But in the eyes of investors, it was sort of considered low quality growth, it ultimately, as to how he left. It came at the expense of profitability, and the growth hit a wall. And that's why I think Wall Street has a little bit of a love-hate relationship with him. The stock initially surged on the news last night. Growth days are back again and then gave up all the gains and then some on these questions of what now and what is Kevin going to do. Yeah, Sarah, um, and just to talk about the broader uh, competitiveness of the space. We had on uh, yesterday talking about uh, the, the sneaker market, Adidas with its first annual loss in three decades. I know that's a very specific story, but even today, City yeah. uh, cuts Nike to 125. It's a competitive space. And I think uh, Under Armour had a taste of brand relevance in this space several years ago, but since then it's lost a lot of that. And you have had new brands. You mentioned On in the in the apparel space where Under Armour is more dominant, Aloe Yoga, Fiori, these brands have come in and taken share. And of course when you're dealing with competitors like a Nike specifically, it's always going to be tough. And I think that is what Kevin Plank has been and is always focused on, is the brand strength and how they are going to get that sort of buzz and heat back into the brand after the, the last few years where it just hasn't been. It hasn't been as relevant. And they've had key partnerships with athletes. Gordon Spieth, for instance, I'm at a, I'm at a business event on the sidelines of the, the Players' Championship. He's here. That's still a big athlete for them. But they just haven't had the kind of momentum. In fact, have, haven't really grown since before COVID in terms of the top line. In the latest quarter, North American revenues were still down double digits. Part of it is the competition, and part of it is just it's finding the right mix of designers and folks to bring this brand back to life. They overextended during the prior plank period, right? They were in wholesale across the board. And I think that's what ultimately hurt them. They've been doing a lot of work to try to correct that in, in, the, in the recent years. But the growth part of it has been missing.